This is the Learning in Hand podcast. I'm Tony Vincent, and this is the show where I share tips, how-tos, and ideas for handhelds in teaching and learning. Episode 23, Collecting and Organizing Voice Memos, recorded August 2010, happens now. Most iPods, iPod Touch, and iPhones have the ability to record voice memos. If your iPod doesn't have a built-in microphone, you can attach one like the Blue Mikey, the Thumbtacks mic, or earbuds with a microphone. I've covered lots of information and uses for voice recording in episode number 14. There are many occasions where teachers want students to record audio, whether it's to assess reading fluency, share reflections, record segments for a podcast, document a field trip, record a musical performance, or archive a discussion or interview, the teacher will most likely want to transfer the recordings from the device to a computer for listening and sharing. Voice memos can be transferred to iTunes by syncing. When synced, a voice memos playlist will appear if you don't already have one. All recordings are placed in this folder. By default, recordings are named by the date and time the recording started. Once copied to iTunes, the recording is in two places, iTunes and the handheld. If you delete a voice memo on the handheld, it is not deleted from the voice memos playlist in iTunes. But if you delete a voice memo from the music section of iTunes, it is deleted from the iPod Touch next time you sync. That voice memos playlist is not well organized. All you see is the date, time, and length of the recording. This is no good for the teacher who is collecting reading fluency samples or collecting any kind of audio. I'd like to show you how to use smart playlists in iTunes to automatically sort voice memos into playlists for each student. This makes it easy for teachers and students to find their own work. First, Set up a smart playlist for each student. Choose New Smart Playlist from the File menu. Set the rule to Artist Contains and the student's name. Click OK. Complete the steps above for each student. For each smart playlist, click View Options from the View menu. Remove all check marks except for Artist, Time, and Comments. When a voice memo is added and artist is changed to the student's name, it will automatically appear in the student smart playlist. So here's how it works. A student records using the voice memos app on their device. The student should say his or her name at the very beginning of the recording. Connect to the computer. The recording should appear in the iTunes voice memos playlist. You may have to click yes if a dialog box appears asking if you would like to copy voice memos to your iTunes library. Select the voice memos playlist. Click view options from the iTunes view menu. Check mark artist and comments and click OK. Also, select as list from the view menu. Now, these actions only have to be done once. Play the recording and listen for the student's name. Press pause and click the recording's artist. Change the artist to the student's name. Be consistent about spelling and whether you use last names or initials. Optionally, click under comments to add any additional information about the recording. You may delete the items in the voice memos playlist after you have added artist information. This way, the voice memos playlist shows only recordings that have not yet been tagged with a student's name. You can place your smart playlist into a folder. Create a folder by choosing New Playlist Folder from the File menu. Name the folder. Then drag and drop each student's playlist onto the folder. This is really handy for computers that are shared among multiple classes. 
having sorted recordings is helpful for grading, collecting portfolio artifacts, and easy access for students to incorporate the audio into their projects. There are, of course, variations to the process I've shown you. For example, if only one student uses each iPod, you can name each iPod the same name as the student. When synced, the iPod's name is shown in the artist field and will automatically sort into the student's smart playlist without you even having to listen for their name. Another way to collect and organize recordings is to have students email from their iOS handheld to Posterous. Now at learninginhand.com 23, you'll find a handout with the steps for using Posterous for collecting student-made recordings. You'll also find a handout with the steps for setting up smart playlists, like I've just shown you in this episode. And that's it for episode 23. For a transcript and much more about iPods, iPads, and podcasting, click on over to learninginhand.com. Thanks for watching.